Why do some songs blow up while others fade faster than last year's TikTok trends? Well, it turns out there's actual science behind it. Yeah, science, not vibes, not luck, but a formula that makes people hit repeat over and over again. To find that formula, I'm diving into a mountain of scientific studies and analyzing over a million songs from 1950 to today. As I go, I'll be piecing together what separates a hit song from the rest, all while making a song of my own. Let's see what we discover and how you can use it to craft your own hit songs. And to understand why I chose this topic, let's take it back to where this problem all started. So I was just scrolling online, but I came across this article that kind of blew my mind. Apparently, a group of researchers from Stanford built an algorithm that could correctly predict billboard hits 75% of the time. What? That seems pretty high, right? I feel like most of the time the music I like and listen to is way different than what's trending on the billboard Hot 100 hits. We do a little bit more research. So I did some more research, but what I found surprised me even more. So I found another research study that kind of corroborates what I found in the first research study. This algorithm can predict songs with 88% accuracy. That's 13% higher than the last one. If this is true and they could predict it with this high of accuracy, what are they looking at? What is the patterns that they're finding between these hit songs that the other songs don't have? And that very question led me down the rabbit hole I was about to jump into today. Before going any further, let me just make sure that 88% is really that good, as good as I think it is. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna quiz myself using ChatGPT. I'm gonna ask it to give me a list of 80 popular songs over the last 50 years, and I will guess if they got on the Billboard Hot 100 or not. Little did I know how hard this quiz would be. I feel pretty good if I had to guess how, what percentage I got. I, I feel like I got 80, 70, 70, 80 percent. We're gonna find out. Turns out I was wrong. We're going. How, how much is it? What? <laughs> no. Wait, wait, what? 36? That's not right. Is that right? Yes, it was correct. Turns out I only got 36 out of 80 right. I even recounted every vote. But that made me think, if a professional music producer like myself did that badly, how would the general population fare? So, as it turns out, pretty much the same as me. This study I found was analyzing the entertainment industry and movies specifically. People were trying to guess if whether they watched a movie if it was going to be a success or not. They got it right around 50% of the time. I also found this study by Robert Prey that just generally said people are bad at predicting hits. Then I found this study, which was using functional MRIs to determine what was going to be hit songs. And you guessed it, it got it right less than 50% of the time. Turns out we are not good at predicting what's going to be successful or what's going to be a hit. But algorithms apparently are. There has to be something more that this algorithm is looking at that I'm just not understanding right now. And I was determined to find out what that was. The best way I can think of to dissect what's going on behind this algorithm is to one, look at some more scientific studies to see what the research says, and two, build a song along the way to see if I can make it sound like some of these billboard hits. And if we're gonna start off writing a song, the first thing I wanna know is what genre I should write. So I hopped on my computer to see what the scientific research says. According to this article from Headphones Addict, pop is the most popular music genre worldwide. That's, I mean, that's what I was thinking. Pop is just short for popular music, so. That makes sense. Whereas hip hop and R&B dominates the US market. I mean, I'm in the US, so maybe that means I make a hip hop genre because it's the most popular, giving it the best shot of charting. But I am a pop music producer and I am very international. I'm not, I'm not international, but I do think I am gonna make a pop song instead. So even though I had the genre selected, I still had to determine what I should actually use for my beat. So I did some research and I actually found a really cool data set that had a bunch of Billboard Hot 100 hits off of Kaggle. I put them into a Google Sheet and it gave some really cool information. As you can see here, all of these songs that you see on the left are ones that have charted. I had no idea that Spotify was taking this much data when you upload your songs, but I guess it is. It tracks something called 
danceability, energy, speechiness, acousticness, liveness, instrumentalness, valence. <laughs> what? And actually, according to this 88% study, if you look at the details, you'll notice that it used these Spotify details and all of these values I just mentioned in that algorithm. So maybe cracking this code and understanding what each of those numbers really mean is gonna help us make our beat. Let me quickly explain what Spotify means by each of those different adjectives that they use in their data. Danceability refers to how easy it is to dance to the song. Apparently Spotify measures this by things like tempo, beat strength, and the rhythm consistency that it provides. Energy is how calm or exciting a track feels. Spotify measures the general loudness, the timbre of instruments, also the entropy or the amount that chaos is happening in the song. I'm not a data scientist, I was just, just reading this. <laughs> Speechiness covers how much of the song is talking versus how much is singing. Spotify has a bunch of podcasts, so as podcasts would be closer up to one. Rap songs would be more speechy, for example, than say a love song ballad that you sing the entire one. I have it sorted by speechiness too, which is why this is all kind of collected together rather than the scatter plot we were seeing before. Valage shows how happy or how sad a song is. And by looking at this chart, it looks like all across the board, there's art tons of happy and sad songs that make the billboard hot 100 <laughs> this this is great this is this is gonna help me for sure okay but as it turns out it only made things harder spotify measures how happy or sad a song is by things like the lyrical content major or minor chords that it uses and the type of instruments the song uses as well acousticness is how raw the song is for example the best way i can describe this is if you were performing this in a coffee shop with just an acoustic guitar and singing, that would be very acoustic. Whereas if you have a lot of production quality and a lot of production synths, that makes your acousticness go down. And as you can see, most of the songs are gearing towards more the side of higher production value. You can see a high skew on the very low end of things. And finally, the one that I think might have helped these algorithms the most is called popularity. Popularity uses the number of plays and how recent those plays are to rank a song on how popular it is. This is probably great for predicting hits, but it's not gonna help us make our beat, so I won't be using it. If I do an average of all of these columns, I'm gonna have a really good starting point for where to put my song. And yes, this was a great starting point, but this was only 600 songs. There was way more Billboard hits out there that I could be pulling from, so I decided to hop back into the research. So I also found this study using a different data set on Billboard hit songs that did something similar. And they put it into a nice chart that I can use and show you right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these averages, put them with my averages and combine them into a range that I can use. Then I'm gonna use that range and actually find some reference songs that I can listen to and get an idea of what 0.6 danceability actually might mean. In this case, we'll have to make a song as happy or sad as Hey Mama by David Guetta or I Don't Give a fuck by Dua Lipa. In terms of energy, we're shooting for something like Say So by Doja Cat or Flowers by Miley Cyrus. For danceability, we're looking at something like Starboy by The Weeknd or Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> for acousticness, we're looking for something like Thank You Next by Ariana Grande or Take a Bow by Rihanna. For a speechiness, we're looking for something like Juice by Lizzo or Run It by Chris Brown. <laughs> okay. This is a lot of references though. Normally for references, I don't choose more than three songs that I'm gonna base my song off of. This is like 12 songs, but I do think it is gonna help us make the beat. So I'm back. I spent the rest of the day working on the beat and kind of fleshing things out. I also happened to get a haircut. Now I'm ready to take some of these ideas I had and arrange them into a song and kind of put them where the song structure needs to go. Like what, what does science say about song structure itself? Should I have a verse? Should I start with a chorus? Do I even need a bridge? Well, let's find out. From one study that analyzed 80,000 chords over 745 classic US Billboard pop songs, they found that musical pleasure comes from the right combination of uncertainty and surprise. The study basically says two things. When people are listening to simple chord progressions and an unexpected chord happens, they tend to prefer that. And also, if they're listening to a complex chord progression and something predictable happens or simple, then they also enjoy that. I also happened upon another study which I thought was really interesting. In order to study expectation and psychology, Dr. David Huron created an experiment that used musical sounds with rats. He was determined to see how many sounds could be played that could scare a rat's attention into turning towards it. Started by playing one note, an A, the rats would turn their head. Then he played AA, the rats turned their head both times. But when he played AAA, 
On the third A, the rats stopped caring. For that third sound, the rats didn't turn their head. They just weren't interested. But something interesting happened when he changed it up. Instead of playing A, 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 Dr. Huron played A, A, B. This time, the rats had their attention the entire time. All three times they turned their head. He continued with his experiment and tried to see what the shortest number of letters that he could continually keep rats attention for. He ended up finding this pattern. A, A, B, A, B, C. Just like the last study, it seems like the unpredictability of these notes is what made them interesting. But what's even crazier about this particular pattern is I think it's perfect for song structure. If we replace A with verse, B with chorus, and C with bridge, we have a blueprint for what we can do with our song. In this case, it would be verse, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. That also happens to be one of the most popular ways of structuring songs that we have. And with that piece of information under my belt, I went back into my song and started arranging it according to what the study had told me. And once I was happy with the arrangement of the song, I was ready to move on to one of the most important parts of this hit, the melody. Let's see what science has to say about writing a good melody. I found this study that specifically compares the impact that lyrics have versus melodies. And it looks like that melodies are actually more important than the lyrics in conveying emotional responses. I've been preaching this for years, so it's nice to be backed up. I also found this study that showed me that over time, melodies have continued to get less complex and simpler. This study also mentioned that the reason in simpler melodies may be because an increase in complexity in other factors of songs. Those factors could be faster tempos, more vocals and more vocal layers, higher quality of sound production, and an increased overall complexity in timbre of the song itself. I completely agree with that. Ever since the transition from the analog world to the digital, all of those tools have become way more accessible than before. And that's all well and good, but a simple and non-complex melody can't be all that I'm shooting for, right? Well, let me hop into my beat and make something that I think would fit in this lens. I went ahead and recorded a lot of different melody ideas that fell in line with what the studies were telling me to do. And with each part I added, my song began to sound better and better, but there was still one important aspect that I needed to nail if my song had any shot of success, the lyrics. The song is sounding a lot better, but it still needs some lyrics. I really enjoy writing lyrics, so I'm excited to see what the science says about this. According to this study, just like songs, lyrics have become simpler and less complex over time. It also mentions that lyrics have become more angry over time. Interesting. This study showed that sad lyrics can make sad songs even sadder, whereas lyrics on happy songs don't necessarily make them happier. And in this study, it shows that lyrics nowadays are using more personal pronouns than ever before, like I and me. It also noted that words related to positive emotions like love are being used less. Before I start writing my lyrics, I'm gonna brainstorm some words that fall in line with these studies that are simple, that tend to be a little bit angrier, that use some more personal pronouns. I'm also going to try to use these lyrics to fit into that Spotify song framework that we talked about before. Obviously, the lyrics and the lyrical content is a big reason if people people will feel happy or sad with the song. Let me hop into the program and just come up with some ideas. I started by creating a word list of potential words I wanted to include in my lyrics. I'll use these words later as a palette to pull from as I'm brainstorming lyrical lines for this song. I tried to keep the lyrics simple and following some of the studies that we'd previously talked about. And although I did feel pretty confident in this palette of words, they weren't going to mean anything unless I actually wrote some lyrics down. Okay, so I had to take some time away, but I'm back on day three with my brainstormed lyrics here. But before I do that, I want to hop back into the science and see if it can guide me in any way. This study from the Journal of Consumer Psychology showed the power of lyrical repetition, saying that repetitive lyrics in a song increase processing fluency and drive market success. I also found this study which showed me that songs with higher rhyme saturation and basic lyric readability not only reach higher chart positions, but tend to resonate more deeply with listeners. Both of those are great studies for just pointing out that I need to be simple with my lyrics, but I also need to include a lot of rhyme. On top of that, I should be re repeating things pretty frequently. So with that in mind, let's get writing. I started off writing my lyrics by using the previous brainstorm words that I had come up with as a guide, but this turned out to be far from easy. Although I had the melody previously etched out, I was really trying hard to fit in the right syllables to make the track as danceable as the references. All while at the same time trying to make my lyrics simple, repeatable, and then have a slight negative valence. This ended up taking me hours, but if my song would have any shot of success, I needed to get it right. 
I think I've got my lyrics finished up here. So I'm gonna record these vocals, I'll do some producing on the track, and then I'll add in some background vocals or just polish it up so it sounds professional, and then I'll show you the final result. And after all that, it was time to see if the scientific studies I followed were going to make this song sound like the hits. So there it is. I'm only going to show the first verse and chorus. If you want to see the full song, go and like this video. This gets a thousand likes. I'll post it on SoundCloud. You can hear the full version. But now the question we've been waiting for. Was I able to find the formula that really separates the hits from the mediocre? And was I able to use it in the song? I think kind of. We definitely learned a lot along the way in what science has to say about hit songs. It seems that the majority of Billboard hit songs are simple. Using simple melodies, simple lyrics, and simple ideas. They use unpredictability and predictability to hook the listeners in. They use repeated patterns in melodies, song structure, and drum grooves to hook people in even more. And maybe most importantly, it seems that hit songs make you feel something. The more that your melody, the beat, your production quality, and lyrics convey that emotion, the higher likelihood it has of success. But even with all of those ideas, there are a lot more factors that the science didn't cover that I'm sure have a big impact on a song's success, including including music marketing, social media, cultural trends, playlist placements, and more. An algorithm may be able to predict 88 out of the next 100 songs that will go on to be hits. But if you keep working hard and you keep making music you're passionate about, you can be part of the 12 that it never saw coming.